Hi, in this slide I want to summarize some examples of service quirks and often I'll do it in contrast. For example, in the first story um, I was uh, uh, in the 70s working f f to, to build a primarily a printing paper distribution chain but we also had industrial paper and Jansan products and actually a floor floor covering products division um, and I noticed that our pure printing paper distribution companies we uh, you know would g give very quick response because the printers you know, wanted jobs you know right done very quickly Whereas when we called on industrial accounts and they were buying tape and packaging materials, they would be happy to get delivery in a week. But if we didn't differentiate between the two categories of customers where we had what are called dual paper houses, we had both printing and industrial, we geared our trucks to sort of giving next day delivery because that's what printers wanted. But now we were giving next day delivery to the industrial people. And I went out and I was talking to somebody saying, you know, uh, we give next day delivery. And the guy said, you know, this is before uh, ERP software. He said, don't do that. That screws everything up. Um, you know, I can't get the paperwork down to the shipping dock. It takes three days internally to do that. So if you get the stuff here, they're not going to have the paper to match it up and be able to receive it correctly. And I said, oh, well, when do you want it? And he said, why don't you deliver it when we ask, not always the next day? And I was like, oh. So delivery response time varies between these two categories of customers. Um, same with uh, back orders. There were some people who said, some segments who said, you know, okay, I'll back order, but I need it as fast as possible. Whereas other people said, look, again, because we tend to order on a monthly replenishment basis, if there are two, three, four, five items back order off a very lengthy uh, invoice with many, many line items, we would prefer that you consolidate the back, back orders and deliver them with fewer shipments to minimize the shipment paper costs and so forth. Um, another industrial uh, MRO buyer characteristic was, hey, I call you up and, and I need to order something that's it's in large quantities, it's peculiar strength, whatever. It's going to be a special made order from a factory. And so what I'm looking for very quickly is could you give me a price and a, and a delivery date when I'm going to get it, availability, P&A as we used to call it. Um, and I said, well, so you're, you're not happy with our P&A response time? And he said, well, that's right. And I said, well, what would be a good response time? And he said, well, you know, if I call you in the morning, I'd like to get in the afternoon. And I said, now, tell me the context. What, what do you do next? He said, well, the truth of the matter is, I just want to get the paper off my desk. And I said, oh, well, tell me more about this. So you get the paper, and what do you do with it? And then what happens if people internally sort of say, well, when is that stuff going to arrive? He goes, oh, that's a good question. Because he said, then I got to go get the file, and I got to root through all the paperwork and try to find the individual order to then find the availability date. And I said, well, what if we gave you a summary report of all of the outstanding back orders and special orders you gave us? You just take out one sheet of paper and you go right down the column and find it and help me uh, help me co-create it. So we sort of co-created what this, for, this form would look like. And of course, this if he wanted the form to really work, he now had to buy all of his back order, special order stuff in my category, he had to buy it from me so it would all be in one sheet. And that's what he did. So we we came up with a way of giving it, giving them a half day P and A response time. Long story um, to get the paper off their deck, and then we gave them this. And I'd say at the peak we were doing about 200 of these reports twice a month, and we got enormous volumes of two, three, four, five thousand dollar direct order shipments or special order. They come in and or a branch and go right out. Where we had you know 25 percent margins, were enormously profitable because the cost of serve was so low. Um, also, when you go into sort of a factory environment where it's much larger scale and there's much more specialization of labor, there are more people who can have different kinds of pain points. So there's the people who, who actually consume and use the stuff. And if you can help them out and just and run everybody and just give them what they want, then they become your spies and sponsors and blockers for you. There's the supervisor, and frankly, they're concerned about find out what their metric is and figure out how to make that metric look better and make them look good. The logistical people, they have their one or two little metrics and their little hot buttons and figure out what that is and how to make them look good. There's overall physical flow and effectiveness, and nobody is typically in charge of that. They're all in their silos, and certainly they wouldn't get up even higher and say, let's look at the total inner business process 
effectiveness, you have to get to the vice president of supply chain to have those kinds of conversations. Um, and as you go through this, when you keep asking each guy, so how do you get measured at the end of the year? How will you know if you've done a good job and get a bonus, et cetera? Um, you, you can actually help plenty of these customers sort of gather and do a better job with their supply chain metrics from on high. Um, I've run into buyers who have said, oh, God, I'm glad you asked. I said, I've got this new VP of supply chain came in, and he wants me to you know, hit these kinds of metrics. I don't really am sure what he's talking about. And I said, oh, well, we understand. And what we'll do is we'll tune our business to make your metrics look good. And once we get there, if you have other suppliers you buy from, not in our category, because I want 100% of the volume from my category, we'd be happy to help them understand how to interface with you to, to, to make this happen. Uh, so in a sense, we're providing an extra service for this guy who was way over his head, but was in charge of a lot of volume at a, at a big account. And that was the key to cracking that account wide open. So those are some examples of how you do an audit and listen carefully and ask the right questions and find these kind of service quirks that are the difference between, you know, no business and all the business. Thank you.